difficult this is for you girls to be away from your the, the practice fields and, and school and all that. And so I can't even imagine what you're going through. Um, for me, I'm originally from Appleton, Wisconsin. So hopefully you girls have all, all know where Appleton is. Um, I started playing soccer when I was five years old and absolutely hated it. Um, my parents told me that I wanted to quit really, really badly, but they said, wait till your first game. And if you still don't like it, we'll let you move on. Um, and I guess I stole and came right off the field and a smile on my face and uh, the rest was kind of set from there. So um, I always played with boys growing up until I was 13. Um, boys just started getting to be too oh, okay. um, strong and more physical and I didn't want to risk any injuries. So at 13, I switched over uh, to a club team in Brookfield for Brookfield Soccer Club. Um, played there with a bunch of my future um, college teammates, actually. Played there for a bunch of years. Uh, switched to FC Milwaukee for like two years um, in high school. Um, and then was able to, to get a, a full ride to UW-Milwaukee. So uh, that was kind of my youth career um, journey. Um, I had played up U13, when I was, when I switched the girls team in U13, I played a year up with all the, my future uh, college teammates. Um, but when I look back at my youth, my club, um, I think it's really important for you girls to find, um, you know, don't try and look at what other people are doing. Um, I know a lot of my teammates at the time were making the switch to other clubs because they felt like they needed, um, because there was something better because of the, the logo. Um, find a club or be a part of something that makes you feel like you're being challenged, that you feel like you're in a good environment to succeed. Um, I can't stress that enough. If you feel like you're not um, being challenged, uh, it's, you have to find something that's going to keep pushing you, right? Um, but growing up, I always wanted to be a professional soccer player, which is crazy to think. I didn't have dreams of being a doctor or um, being a firefighter or, or whatever. Any, I didn't have any crazy dreams besides being a professional soccer player. Um, but I didn't really believe that that could happen for me until I got to college, until I was a sophomore, maybe even a junior in college, um, when I started having quite a bit of success. Um, freshman year of college, I was hoping to just kind of make an impact on the, you know, get some good, decent minutes. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm scoring goals, was leading the, the nation in, in goals for a little bit and started to get a little bit more confidence. Um, but I, I think it's important for all you girls to, to realize that it takes a lot of hard work, right? Um, I think a lot of people look at my kind of my youth career and college and professional career and think, wow, she, you know, had it all. Um, she was, you know, at the top of her, her game, but there was a lot of um, sacrifice that I had to give up along the way. So when I was your age, um, well, I know we have a, a big kind of difference in, in age groups for you girls, but uh, I mean, I missed homecoming dances. I missed birthday parties. Um, I missed family events. Um, you name it, I, I sacrificed it for soccer. Um, so hopefully some of you girls are doing some of those things now. If you, if you truly want to get to that next level in, in your game, it's important that you are taking the time to kind of perfect your craft, if that makes sense. Um, some things that uh, I know that I did that really helped me when I was younger, I did a lot of private sessions. Um, I did a lot of individual training sessions with coaches. I did a lot of individual stuff, like just on my own, uh, going to YMCA, um, going to a racquetball court, just knocking the ball for hours. Um, and I think that all, all those things kind of really helped me get to that next level. Um, playing professionally, just so that you girls kind of know my background post college, um, my first, I didn't even finish, well, I, I finished uh, my playing career at UWM, but I didn't finish, um, I left before I graduated, went over to Germany, played for Bayern Munich for two and a half years. Um, after that, 
came back to the States in 2014, played for Kansas City for a year and a half, um, then got traded to uh, Orlando, played there for a year, and then Houston for a year. Um, and then I have two caps with the women's national team. Um, so I was very fortunate to have a, a solid career, uh, got to travel all over the world for soccer, meet some really cool people, play with some really cool people. Um, but really, I mean, I don't want to keep rambling on. It would be great to know what some of you girls um, want to know about maybe what I did at your age or anything from my career, really, if anyone has any questions. All right. So, Sarah, some of these questions that are coming in, um, I guess you could go back to your younger years. Did you play any other sports besides soccer growing up? Um, yeah, I played basketball. Um, I played in middle school and then in high school, I played um, freshman, sophomore, and senior year. I took junior year off because of, you know, it's a big recruiting year for soccer. And I knew that if I was going to get a scholarship, it was going to be because of soccer, not basketball. Um, basketball was always my, you know, second sport. Um, I was good enough just because I was athletic, but, you know, Skill wise, I didn't, you know, spend hours in the gym. Uh, my first passion and love was, was soccer, but um, I know some coaches are, are different, have different feelings on, multi, you know, playing two sports at the same time or, but for me, I thought it was great because um, one, you're working different muscles. It's a different type of training. I mean, basketball is such a fast paced game. It's kind of similar to soccer in that sense. Um, you know, the transition between offense and defense. Um, but more than anything, it was just something different. And so mentally, um, I did, you know, it was nice not showing up to the same soccer field day after day, um, doing the same um, passing patterns or, or whatnot, you know, playing with different people, having different coaches. And so by the time I got back, to, you know, when soccer season came back around, it was like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get back on the field and see my teammates. So for me, Playing both basketball and soccer was um, was a good thing. Okay. All right. Next question: Have you ever been cut from a team or benched after becoming a starter? And if so, how did you handle it? That's a really good question. Um, I've only been cut from a team once, and that was my last season as a pro. Uh, I did not handle it very well at all. I was blindsided. Um, so again, when I talk about you know, when you look at what I was able to achieve in soccer, you might think like, you know, all the happy thoughts in the world, but my last season was not great. Um, I was playing for Orlando and they cut me a week before our first game of the season. I had no idea. We had player meetings. Um, every single player was having a, a meeting that day and mine happened to be the last one. I should have read into it, um, but I didn't. And I was completely blindsided. Um, that really broke my, my love for the game, to be honest. Um, you know, it, it did fuel me to um, work harder. I did get another opportunity. That's why I played in Houston my last season. Um, but I think mentally it just kind of broke me so much that I just uh, had to take a step back from the game. Um, as far as playing time, yeah. Um, I really only struggled with playing time when I got back to the U.S. League. I mean, college, I started every single game. Bayern Munich, I started every single game. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice for you girls is, obviously, roles change throughout the season. Roles may change throughout the game. So um, it's important to know that um, you do have a role on that team. It may not be the same every single game, um, but you are an important piece to um, to the team and don't let one coach's um, perspective or idea of how you are as a player let you determine how you think about yourself as a player so that's kind of the, bit, the best piece of advice I can give on that well then um, next question what inspired you to be a soccer player um that's pretty simple um Actually, it was uh, Brandy Chastain. Um, I actually just had a crazy conversation, um, brief conversation with her on Twitter, on social media. Um, growing up, 
I mean, the U.S. the women's soccer league wasn't really relevant. Um, I mean, there was you couldn't really follow along. Um, I followed a lot of the the U.S. women's national team, the '99 World Cup, when Brandi Chastain scored that winning PK. That was kind of like that moment was like so iconic for me. I wanted to be just like that when she ripped her shirt off. I had the poster in my bedroom. Um, the kind of the exchange that we had on social media just a few days ago. Um, she congratulated me on being cancer free for 15 years. Um, her aunt actually got her hair done at my parents' uh, hair salon for like years and years and years. And she, her aunt gave me a, a like a player card signed by Brandy Chastain, like dreams do come true. And so that was kind of my motivation growing up. Like, hey, she said I can do it, so I can do it. Um, obviously, it took a lot of hard work, and it wasn't just like that belief, but that kind of fueled me to to try and strive for for that next level. Um, I'm actually doing an interview, a Zoom call with her tomorrow, so I'm pretty stoked about that. That's awesome. I know a lot of people don't know, but uh, congratulations. I mean, 15 years cancer-free, that, that's amazing. Do you, do you maybe want to touch base on that? Because that probably came at a time in which – in your youth when you're trying to get going with your soccer career and how it affected your playing and how you had to overcome that? Yeah, uh, no, I absolutely love talking about it. I know it sounds weird to say that. Um, I think because I did have such a positive outcome with it, obviously, um, being a freshman in high school, a lot of new things happen, right? Uh, a bigger surrounding than you're used to. Um, and then all of a sudden, January, you know, right after Christmas, um, I get diagnosed with cancer and having to go through chemotherapy and, and was basically out of school and out of sports for about six months um, before I was able to, to be back. Um, my first soccer game back, I played 10 minutes and could barely breathe, but I was just so happy to be back out there. Um, like I mentioned, I played basketball at the time, so my first shot back at the... <laughs> At the rim, I couldn't even make it up to the to the hoop. Um, as how much muscle and fatigue that I had um, just from going through that. So, um, I mean, it tested my my desire to get back and play the game. Um, it was not easy, but I loved playing soccer so much. I loved being a part of a team and having teammates, and that's really what motivated me to to stay positive through it all. Right? Because I think you can even look at what we're all going through right now with the coronavirus, um, it's really easy to get negative and to get sad or depressed about what our lives have come to. But um, for me, I mean, it's, you have to stay positive and take it day by day. And, um, and that's, uh, that's really what got me through all of, all of the cancer stuff. Uh, before I was diagnosed, like a week before I was diagnosed, I was at an ODP event in, at Purdue University playing and then all of a sudden I was in the hospital. So it was very, um, very quick. Yeah, no, that's well done. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go in order here for these questions. So we're kind of going all over the place. As you're growing up in, from youth to college to the pros, like what was your nutrition like and how did that change in order to compete at the highest level? Um, yeah, so I mean, I think nutrition comes a lot with, um, kind of what you're used to at home, uh, maturity, realizing that, hey, this is impacting how I perform on the soccer field. Um, it, I think a lot of it also is when you're younger, you can pretty much eat or drink whatever you want and um, be able to perform at a, a decent level. And until once you get around that high school age, it becomes more and more impor important. Um, you know, even, I mean, we all make bad decisions, but the more that you pay attention to what you're putting into your body. I mean, if you think about it, your body's only going to perform as well as um, you handle it. So, I mean, that goes with taking care of your body, stretching, all that kind of stuff, but also what you're putting into it. So if you think about your car or your body as like a race car or a, any sort of car, if you're putting crappy fuel in it, it's not going to perform well. Um, and so, I mean, just to kind of touch on what I do now with, um, with Chipotle is, you know, eating real ingredients and not, um, you know, crappy things, uh, fried food, stuff like that. That's all going to hinder your performance. So, uh, yeah, nutrition played a huge role in, in my success. Um, 
I think one specific moment that I can think about in my career where I noticed a huge difference was my first season over at Bayern Munich. Um, obviously being in Germany, food is different. Um, I gained a little bit of weight my first um, four months there because I just kind of resorted to comfort foods there. Um, and after that, I really paid attention to what I was putting into my body, got back, was probably in the best shape of my life, was playing at the peak of my career, um, was getting called in with the U.S. Women's National Team. So there's no, you know, there, there's definitely a coincidence in, in what I ate and getting up to that, uh, that Women's National Team uh, level. Okay. I guess we really didn't go over this, but people are asking, what position did you play? And I guess we could branch off of that. Have you always played that same position? Um, so my entire um, professional career, I was a, a center forward. Um, most teams I played on played a 4-3-3, 4-5-1. Um, four, uh, four, that, that was mainly in the U.S. League. Over in Germany, we played a 4-4-2, which I preferred and suited my um, playing style as a forward a little bit better. But um, now growing up, when I was on the boys team, I was um, in the back line, um, whether it was center back or outside back. Uh, I always guarded the, the best forward. Um, and then it really wasn't until I switched to the girls team where they put me at uh, an attacking position and at forward. And my first tryout with Brookfield Soccer Club, I played on their B team at um, E-line and at an indoor game and I scored five goals. And then directly after that, I played with the red team. So the first team, and I scored five more goals. And so ever since that day, I was a, a forward. Um, and then when I did switch to FC Milwaukee, my coach uh, moved me as a center midfielder and I struggled. I was not a very good center midfielder. I was not used to, um, the, the fitness was not uh, good for me. I really struggled with uh, the, the pace of that. And then, um, but I think looking back, it made me a, a better a better player because I started understanding the game differently. I started understanding um, how to make runs, uh, where to make, um, you know, the passes. So for all you girls, if you are playing a different position um, than you're used to, maybe it's just one game, maybe it's the entire season, maybe high school you play a different position than, than club. It's really important to realize that, um, you know, it's, it's going to make you a better player in the end. Okay. This kind of goes along with what we're going through right now. So like, obviously the social distancing, like, so these kids are like in their backyard playing with their siblings. Did you have any siblings to help you when you were growing up as a youth player? Um, I did not. I'm an only child. Um, however, um, fourth through sixth grade, my neighbors, there's three boys. And so I was constantly in the backyard playing with them. Um, uh, I guess as an only child, I was always very, I wasn't very outgoing. I didn't put myself in, in situations to interact with other kids besides going to like camps. Um, I hated going to soccer camps. I hated uh, joining new teams and stuff like that. But again, it got me out of my comfort zone. And um, those, those are the moments that really pushed me and, and made me better. What were some of uh, the biggest challenges you faced as a player? Um, wow. I'm sure you could look at it different ways. Um, obviously playing in Germany, not knowing the language uh, was definitely difficult. Um, I think just when I really look at and analyze, you know, I had a lot of success in the German league, the U S league, I struggled with just a little bit more. Um, I don't know why that is, but I think it's just the different styles of soccer. Um, the U S league was and still is very much based on athletic ability, um, the physicality of the game, um, and the pace. And I'm not, I wasn't a forward who would, um, look to get in behind the line a lot. I was a, you know, back to goal forward. I'm 5'11", so I'm rather tall. Um, so I think, you know, that was something that I really struggled with, but again, it's, it's knowing what you're really good at and how you can impact the game with your strengths. Okay. 
Who, so with all the club teams uh, that you've played with, who did you feel most comfortable with and why? Um, hmm. You know, I think uh, when I played for Brookfield, um, I was probably the happiest. Uh, we had a really great group of girls. I was playing a, a year up at the time um, for those three years I was with the club. Um, my, our, our coach was one of the best coaches I've ever had, really focused on the, your technical ability. Um, and that's one big piece of advice I would give you girls is you have to spend time getting comfortable with the ball. Um, I, just, I just don't think that, you know, being around the, the youth game, I just don't think kids are where they're at, where they need to be um, with the ball. Uh, soccer is a game that's a lot more fun when you can control and dictate what you're doing with the ball. Um, so that's one thing that I really appreciated. I always focused on um, my technical ability and took pride in having good control with that. Um, so I, that's, I mean, Brookfield really helped me with that and, and the coaches there. Um, but again, it's just, it's a matter of finding an environment that you feel like you're being challenged and, and improving. Going back to your college days, did you find it easy to play soccer and concentrate on your academics at the same time? Uh, yeah, this, this has actually been a, a pretty frequent question. Um, I think it's really important that you, if you girls do get to that, the, the collegiate level, that you kind of balance those different areas of your life. Uh, you know, you obviously have your social life, your academics, and then your athletics. And it's really important that you have an equal balance with that because if you're spending all your time on your academics and your athletics and you don't have a social life, um, it, you, you need that happiness and that, that time away from, from both of those to, to kind of relax and regroup. Um, I struggled with the academic side of it. I focused so much on a lot on soccer, um, cause that was my passion and obviously a little bit on my social life as well. So, I mean, I was constantly in study halls. Um, it took me a full year at college to kind of figure that out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely important. And I think the reason why I struggled with it in, in college my first year was because uh, obviously I didn't have my parents there telling me, hey, you should be studying. Hey, you need to get some rest. You need to get some sleep. Um, so yeah, it just takes a little bit of maturity. All right. Uh, who is the most talented player that you have ever played with and played against and why? Um, Lauren Chaney, um, best teammate I've ever had. You, Lauren Holiday, Lauren Cheney. Have you girls heard of her? She was on the women's national team a few years back. Um, she's probably the most selfless player I've ever played with. Uh, she was like our number 10, our center midfielder, playmaker. Uh, I mean, she could take people on like effortlessly, um, but didn't care if she got, you know, mentioned about, you know, if she didn't care if she scored the goal, she didn't care if her name was in the headlines of the, you know, paper or whatever. She um, just wanted to be a, a great teammate. Um, another one that was really, really good teammate was Heather O'Reilly Payo. Um, again, she's probably like the ultimate competitor. Uh, she'd be at practice and like her tongue would be hanging out. Um, you always wanted her on your team for small sided games. Um, best player I ever played against. Um, that's tough. Uh, Jess Fishlock. Um, I guess over, she played um, with Seattle for years. Um, I didn't have to go directly against her. She was a center midfielder, but I mean, she was so crafty with the ball. Um, probably the best defender I had to go up against was also one of my teammates in Kansas City, Becky Sauerbrunn. Um, so, I mean, there's been a, quite a few players um, I've been lucky to play with, so. Okay. At the professional uh, ranks, who is your favorite coach and why? Um, that's a tough question. Um, I probably learned the most when I was overseas in Germany for Bayern Munich. Um, our head coach there had played in the men's, I believe, second division. And, uh, you know, while a lot of what I learned, I had to translate from German to English. Um, he, his knowledge of the game, he really, um, he really helped me see the game specifically to my position. Um, he made me like, 
he um, allowed me to really um, fine tune my craft as a center forward, how to shape my runs, how to make my runs um, in the, sp specifically in the box. Um, and so that, I mean, he really, really challenged me and made me a, a better player, learn how to combine with players a little bit better. And, um, but I think in the U S league, probably Vladko, um, who is now the U S women's national team head coach. Um, I think what he was really good at, he allowed you to kind of be your own player. Um, he didn't necessarily coach like, um, he just kind of let you guys have a, an imagination while you play. And, um, obviously he was super passionate about it. He had great relationships with all of his players. And I think that's why we won two championships. Those, those years I, were, I was there is because he just, um, we all got along so well. And, and he was kind of that, that leader, um, of that. Okay. Now based off like individual games, did you have any like pregame rituals that you had to do before games? Um, hmm. No, I wasn't very superstitious as a player. Um, in college, what I like to do, I always, um, I wrote at the time Drogba, Didier Drogba. Um, when he played for Chelsea, he was like my idol, um, big, strong forward. And so I always try to emulate my game after him, be strong with the ball, um, clinical in your finishing. Um, so I always wrote his name on my hand so that, you know, anytime we had a set piece, I could, you know, look at my hand and, and remind me to think about being physical, being strong. Um, that really helped me um, in those moments. But I mean, I like to listen to music before a game. I like to eat the same foods before a game. Um, try to get into a routine so that you know that what you can control to help you perform. Growing up, did you have any weaknesses to your game? And if so, how did you improve those? Um, that's another good question. Um, obviously, having cancer freshman year, um, before that, I was a totally different player. Um, I was 5'3 before cancer. I grew eight inches in high school. So I became virtually a totally different player. Um, beforehand I was you know I was a, like a stick I was scrawny I could run for forever I never got tired um, I was quick and then by the time I was a senior in high school getting into college um, I really had to focus on my fitness level um, and I struggled with it I, I didn't pass fitness tests my freshman year at UW-Milwaukee um, and so overcoming that um, you know was even something I had to overcome in my professional career working on my fitness day in and day out um, staying after practices. Um, I think it's important for if you girls are struggling with something to set goals, right? Um, be, be responsible for your own success. If you can, you know, set yourself a goal, you know, I want to get this many, you know, levels better on my fitness test or um, work on your finishing. It, it's important to set goals to know that if you are making progress or if you need to work harder said uh what his what was your favorite game that you've ever played in while playing with Bayern Munich and also when he played professionally in the U.S. um my my first four months when I played for Bayern Munich um I gotten over there Bayern was at the bottom of the league I think they're in like eighth in like eighth or ninth place um and we're really looking they were like on the verge of getting um, moved, bumped down to the second division. And so we came, um, me and a, another American from Boston, uh, we came to Germany, came to Bayern Munich. We had a semifinal game against, I believe it was Hamburg. Um, I think it was on the day before Easter or, or on Easter. And so semifinals, we ended up winning five to two. I had a hat trick and my roommate had two goals. So it was kind of cool, like in the German newspapers, you know, Americans spark Bayern to the to the finals. So that was pretty cool. And then when we got to the finals, um, we beat Frankfurt. We're the complete underdogs, but we beat them 2-0, uh, played in front of 17,000 fans. Uh, it was the most people I'd ever played at or played in front of at that time and had my parents, grandparents, um, 
and uncle and cousins all at the game. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I scored the the first goal, assisted on the second. We won 2-0. Um, it was off of a corner kick, header. It was a pretty classic way for me to score throughout my career was with my head. So um, that was probably the most memorable game. Um, but I don't know if there's any other ones that really stand up to that. Um, to be honest, I really enjoyed college soccer. Um, I had some great times at UWM. A lot of those games kind of stick out in my memory more than um, professionally. Okay, so I, I guess you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what, what would you say is your biggest goal that you've ever scored? Yeah, that was probably my biggest goal of my entire career. Um, huh, I'm trying to think back. Um, that was probably it. Um, I mean, college scored lots of goals. Yeah, probably the one with Byron is the biggest goal that I scored in my entire career. Are you are you the leading goal scorer at Milwaukee? Yeah. Still? Okay. Yep, I had ninety three career goals. How many of those were scored with your head? I don't know. I should really look at that. Um, I would say a lot. Um, I mean, Kate Megna and I connected on a lot. Um, Kira. Um, Kind of took over over that uh, after Kate Magna left. So I would, I mean, I would, I would say probably more than half, to be honest. For those of you that have never seen Sarah score before, I think I've never seen you score with your feet. I think I've only seen you score balls out of the air, which is amazing because that is a skill that not many players are born with. Did you do anything to become really good out of the air? I know you're tall as a player, but in terms of like, your upper body movements and like getting in a position? Um, yeah, I mean, I did a lot. So when I, I mentioned Brookfield and my coach there, I really stressed, you know, um, your technical ability. We had, um, she had one of those balls with a rope attached to it and you'd throw it over a, a, a beam or something and you would just work on timing of it. So you'd jump up, head the ball and it'd swing and then you'd jump up, head it again. And I mean, it took a lot of, um, work on, on timing of heading the ball, timing on jumping. Um, but then, you know, a lot of it um, just came down to just the will and the determination to go up and win the header. You know, um, I, I particularly didn't like winning head balls on, on set pieces because it gets so clustered. Um, there was one practice at UWM that I actually remember I was just talking to Kenzie Gillespie, one of our, one of my teammates from there, when I was speaking to her high school team, uh, we were at Shorewood High School and we were doing set pieces and our head coach was so upset um, that I was being timid and that I wasn't going up strong for the, for the balls. So he said, if you don't get your head on the ball eight out of 10 times on these corner kicks, everyone's running fitness. And oh my gosh, it was so much pressure. I was so nervous, but it, that moment, you know, really forced me out of my comfort zone and to really um, go up and challenge for it. So uh, that kind of helps me get over my fears of heading the ball. All right. What was your favorite stadium you've ever played in? Ooh. Um, so that game with Bayern, we played at FC Cologne stadium. So that was um, really cool. Unfortunately, our, the women's team there, we didn't play in the men's um, Bayern Munich Stadium, Allianz Arena. So I wish I could say that, but no. Um, Portland in the U.S. League is always a fun place to go play at. Providence Park. Um, they would usually they average between like 16 and 18,000 fans for all their home games. So it's quite the environment. Um, my first year with Orlando, we played at the Citrus Bowl, which was just kind of cool. Um, I think that first game we had 23,000 fans there. So that was probably the most I had played in front of. Uh, the New Orlando City Stadium is really, really nice. Um, I don't know. There's been some really cool stadiums over the years, but those are probably the, the few. How much time did you uh, spend training on your own outside of like a structured practice with like a club, even professionally? Um, professionally, to be honest, I probably should have spent more time. Um, as, I mean, I think you just have to be smart about what you're doing once you get to that professional level. It's, um, 
you know, you don't want to overdo it if you are, um, you know, before games and stuff like that. So a lot of it was going in and doing, you know, core work or um, more functional kind of stuff um, instead of high impact stuff because your season is so long and um, you play a lot, uh, a lot more minutes and games. Uh, as a youth player, though, um, I mean, these girls' age, you girls can't do enough, in my opinion. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I had usually three three days a week practice for club, uh, games on the weekends. Um, I would do speed and agility workouts. We had this place in Appleton called um, Acceleration, where I would do, like, treadmill workouts, um, plyometrics, stuff like that. Um, I was also traveling down to Milwaukee for private individual sessions as well with um, Milwaukee Wave players. Um, gosh, what else was I doing? I mean, quite a bit. I mean, even in high school season, when I was playing high school soccer, I would, I had seventh and eighth period off. Um, I'd come home, run three to five miles, and then go back to school for high school practice. So uh, I think at the end of the day, if your goal is to play college soccer or even beyond that, or if you just want to make it to the next um, level team, if you're just doing what your coach is asking you to do, you're probably not doing enough. Um, it's, it's the ones who are putting in the extra work, showing up before practice, staying later, uh, doing stuff on their off days. Those are the ones who are going to see results. Well said. Um, what is one skill or soccer related strength that you wish you would have spent more time working on? Um, uh, I mean, fitness was one of my weaker uh, skill sets. Like, I always struggled with it. So I wish I would have had the drive, mainly towards the end of my career. I just, um, I wish I would have had more drive to work on that aspect. Um, one thing that I really wish I would have done more was watch film. Uh, specifically, oh, I mean, both on myself and other players. Uh, I think it's really important for you girls to kind of analyze and watch yourself. And I think it's kind of eye opening when you look and you watch yourself not do something right. I struggled with not, you know, not scoring, missing a goal or not being where I should be. I really struggled with that. But it, at the end of the day, it's, it really helps you and understand um, how you can improve. And then obviously, you know, find a, your favorite team or your favorite player or someone who plays the same position as you and watch a lot of film on them and watch to see what makes them a really good player. Um, because you can learn a lot from what other people are doing. Well said. Well, hey, Sarah, I appreciate um, your time that you've uh, given us this evening. It's greatly appreciated, especially during these tough times. Um, before we let you go, do you have any advice that you would give us during this tough time? I mean, we're trying to break through so we can get outside soon, but uh, what wise words would you, uh, you close us out with? Oh, wise words. I would have to uh, go back to my college days um, at UW-Milwaukee. We had a saying on our locker room wall, and it was bringing out the best in each other. Um, and I think it's so important for you girls to realize that you girls are all in this together. Um, that no matter if it's soccer related, um, school related, uh, personal life, boyfriends, whatever, um, be there for your teammates uh, because that's what's ultimately going to help you girls get through this. So. Well said. Well, again, thank you, Sarah, for coming out and spending time with us. Um, everybody else, we appreciate you guys taking the time out of your evenings as well. And uh, hopefully we can get outside soon together. So. All right. Thank thanks, you, Paul. Sarah. Bye, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.